Theodore Katouf is the former U.S. ambassador to Syria. He's joining us now with a reaction to all of this. Uh, it's, it's day three, people saying it's pretty much holding. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, were you surprised at that or, or it, it, to be expected? I was surprised. Yeah. Yeah, because we have virtually 100 or more opposition groups that had to sign on to this deal. I don't think the president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, is that enthusiastic about it. He had to be kept on a tight leash by the uh, Russians, I, I believe, because his troops have been making gains. So to get through the first three days with, uh, it, it's not perfect, but uh, with a, a greatly reduced number of casualties and incidents is uh, remarkable. And so many besieged cities, uh, so many people struggling within that country, and the thought of UN aid actually getting to them, that's also a positive, correct? It is, and uh, aid from the UN, the Red Cross, is getting into some of the, the worst uh, besieged uh, areas in Syria, so that's a big plus as well. The talks in Geneva, um, can this thing, can you move the ball down the field, I guess is the question. Well, that's the big and unknowable question. You know, Russia really has a lot of influence in this situation in that it has reversed the fortunes of the regime uh, in a good way for the regime and a bad way for the opposition. And so uh, the Russians uh, have some uh, chits to call in. So if they want Assad to sit down in Geneva uh, and not sabotage uh, what's been going on, I think he probably has to do it. But He's probably hoping the opposition uh, gives him an excuse to back out. And you've got uh, 97 uh, groups, as you mentioned. Uh, you've, you've got the wild cards. You've got all these uh, neighboring countries. Turkey obviously has a vested interest in all of this. I mean, it's so fragile. Talk to me about some of the hurdles that, that need to be overcome moving forward. Well, you're right. Uh, Syrians are not uh, masters of their own fate. And some people say, well, it's the Russia and the United States that are calling all the shots. Well, that's not really true either. You have Turkey uh, with its own interests just north of the border. And the uh, Turks seem more obsessed with what the Kurds are doing in Syria uh, and the gains they're making, uh, much more than they seem worried about ISIS or uh, other radical groups. Uh, and so their number one priority seems to be uh, to keep the Kurds from uh, dominating the border areas. And Saudi Arabia doesn't appear all that happy with this. I think the U.S. is exerting a lot of influence with the Saudis to go along with all of this. But they don't like the gains that Assad has made at the expense of some of their clients as well. And uh, Turkey's president uh, noted that the, the, the cessation actually only covers about a third of Syria. Is that likely to expand, do you think? Well, the reason it covers only a third is because ISIS controls large swathes of the desert. And a good part of Syria is desert. And, uh, and of course, not, it's not just desert. And the Nusra Front, which I think actually Turkey has some sympathy for, it's an offshoot of al-Qaeda, uh, is in the uh, northwest of, uh, of uh, Syria. So, uh, and the Russians have said, and we've agreed, that they can continue to hit those two groups just as we'll continue to hit ISIS. And uh, so, uh, I guess looking forward, the, the date that everyone's talking about, March 7th, is, is that a, a likely target? I mean, that's, that's pretty close in terms of getting things going once again. Well, you know, Dima Stora, the special UN envoy, did get the parties to Geneva in early February, and of course, uh, it blew up almost immediately. And it started late, uh, to the extent that it started. So uh, I would say March 7th is a moving target, and there's almost certainly to be some incidents between now and then that make one side or the other threaten not to go. Yeah, all right. Well, it's always a great delight to have you on the broadcast, and hopefully the, the news will always be good when you come in, although that's hard to come by. Isn't <laughs> First it? good news we've had in a while. Yeah, long time. Thanks so much, Ambassador. Appreciate it.